controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Can I get an oh yeah? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm not good at that. I love <laughs> when I see I love people that. do that. No, it's a trend. <laughs> people do it. <laughs> no, it's a trend. It is. I didn't think you were just making that up. Oh, no, but I'm like, it's it's always funny when like I see people on the street. I've heard numerous people on the street say that. Okay. Can I get an oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so today we're talking about, well, sex and what's going on. And how people are actually saying, can I not get an oh yeah? Yeah. Put it, that's why people are asking because no one's having it. Yeah. Can so, I get an oh yeah? They're just like addressing the fact that sex is on the decline. This is all based on surveys Fair. of the population starting in 2000. And yeah, that's true. That's true. Right? Like it's not Observing like Observing through condo <laughs> windows and being like, less. They're like, we're sending out a fleet of drones to spy on people. I mean, yeah. pretty soon, like are they probably could tap into the phones and find out. Like how, like would a, like if a phone can hear the sex? Yeah. I mean, I'm or, sure it's being tracked. Everything. I mean, like, I'm not sure that's being tracked. I don't tracked. know if that. I was like, I think of no, all the things but that's your not. Phone, no, but your phone's always, like, the, I'm not saying scientists are using that data, yeah. but it's like your phone is always listening to you. So, and the phone definitely knows how much porn, but that's how we're, although porn, we'll get to that at the end, <laughs> relates to it. But in 2018, a quarter of Americans said they hadn't had sex in the previous year. Whoa. And that's the most recent 25%. survey. That's a lot. In, and it, in and, the previous year. And it's also ages 18 and up. So it's not like, obviously, like a kid's like, I didn't have sex. Right. Yeah. Um, so the Journal of Sexual Medicine found that from 2000 to 2018, sexual activity decreased for both men and women who are aged 25 to 35, 34, but significantly decreased for men aged 18 to 24, year on year, weirdly. Mm. And yeah, there like a lot of scientists are just starting to be like, okay, this is obviously exacerbated by many different things, but the, but there's sort of a bit of an acceptance that there's a decrease in sexual activity. And in fact, there was a lot of sexual activity based on surveys in like the sixties and seventies. And it's just funny to think of like boomers and being like, <laughs> like, yeah, well, I don't know. It just felt like it feels like there would have been less access to like Tinder or even like, right. To me. Well, I guess that's maybe like part of it is that like meeting in person, like now, you really do have the pick of anything or so it feels. And so it's always like, well, is there someone better? Is there someone better? Is there someone better? If you know oh. you have a pool of where, I mean, uh, this is like <laughs> not scientific. I'm just saying like my, uh, someone as someone who's literally never used Tinder in their life. Yeah. I assume though, it's just like you're out there. There's so much opportunity to date and try and find the perfect person. There's, there's a, I've been tagged on this numerous times from lesbians on Tinder. Cause there's, is it Tinder or Bum? There's one of them that like one of the questions is like uh, name an alt celebrity you're obsessed with, and there's like <laughs> le- there's like some lesbians in Toronto who are like tagging you. R- we're like Greg and Mitch of ASAP Science. Like if you don't know them, get out of my DM or oh something like that. God. And so I've gotten included. All these, it, yeah, it's oh, like, I didn't it's know like, it's just you it's like comedy. it's like a person <laughs> saying like my personality is that I like. <laughs> we're like the and niche. It's, it's like a lesbian. Oh my yeah, gosh. Like, if you're listening to this right now, thank you. Yeah, but I'm like, that's that's an example of like, you're like, I'm only laying you if you know ASAP Science. It's like, well, good luck getting laid. <laughs> yeah, it's like truly. M- well, actually, we found out there are straight men that listen to this podcast. A lot, actually. A so lot. We yeah. Then, so actually, we should have a little meetup. And then I what? guess that doesn't help lesbians. What do you mean a meetup? So our audience can meet each other if they're online and have sex. Well, if they're online saying, if you don't listen to side note, or if you don't know Greg or Mitch, I'm not laying you. It's okay. Like, <laughs> what are you doing with your hand? You're doing it. Mitch, what is happening? I don't know. I'm becoming straight. No, Mitch just, that's how I I've, like flirt. I've <laughs> never seen you do that. He did the, what is it? It's not, you do that. Yeah. No, I know I do it, but I was like, I've never seen it go on to you. <laughs> and it was like, you did it like four times, like a nervous tick. I thought you were at twitching. Uh, no, I was just saying, if people are like, well, you got to know them. It's like, well, when we can help people meet up. Yeah. Okay. So since no one's having sex, we're going to do a, we will solve side note this meetup, crisis. And we're going to be like, everyone has to find someone to fuck by the end of this meetup. <laughs> um, and that's just all we're doing. Okay. Well, I don't know if is it a crisis. <laughs> I w- okay. I mean, we've known in a lot of countries that um, birth rates are going down as yeah. well. Right. And in those countries, 
or in particular, like places like Japan that are like facing really, really low birth rates or like they're trying to promote like their younger generations drinking more and having sex more. And a lot of times the conversation around that, which I think is applicable to even North America and sort of the Western world is high levels of stress, high levels of like job committedness and hmm. like not enough money and the challenges of like not wanting to have kids. But outside of kids, even I can imagine like the sex drive when you're stressed and expected to work all the time and connected to the internet on top of social media and yeah. always having to perform in this way that a lot of people feel brings them anxiety. It's like, of course you don't have a sexual desire Yeah, because your like mental load is so high. Yeah. One study found that in America, U.S. adults age 18 or over had sexual frequencies of approximately nine, nine fewer times per year in the early 2010s compared to the 1990s. Wow. And then in Germany, the proportion of men 18 years or older who reported no sexual activity in the past year increased between 2005 to 2016 every year. And then <laughs> sexual inactivity increased from 7.5% to 20.3%. But this similar study in Britain <laughs> has found that there's been no change in sexual uh. activity from 2000 until 2018. I'm like, okay, Britain, so there's some. Oh, it's in just Britain, Britain. They're banging. It's just Britain. <laughs> Germany, uh. this is happening. America, this is happening. Japan, this is happening. Okay, what the are the But I'm like, Britain? <laughs> like, oh, it's okay. Let's get a fuck maybe on because they've always been, They're like self deprecating that. They, I don't know. What's the. Maybe. What's Britain got? I know. I kind of go. was trying to be like, what does Britain know? Or are they just like sexy people? <laughs> um, I'm not going to drag our British community, <laughs> but I'm like, is that it? They are. As someone who identifies as a lot of British, I'm like, I wouldn't say I'm the sexiest man in the room at any moment. No, but point maybe it's not about being like sexy, but sexual. Yeah. You know? Like maybe there's a different level of their culture. I that so, it, I just picture like <laughs> Ron Weasley. I just picture like Weasley's mom. Like there's nothing <laughs> about it that makes me, it's like, I just get a compat. Like, I'm just like, I'm like, imagine if you said Spain, I'd believe it. Right. Or, they come up like, you know, yeah, you're right. Or like, like Latin American Latin countries America. that like are like, you know, so yeah. Britain to me is just like, nigh. Like, nar. <laughs> That's Australian. Even, like, nar. Australian, I'm like, they seem... Australians seem se sexy. Or, sorry. They're all, like, yeah. Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, They're just jacked. Are they? They're all... They're, all they do is travel. Like, it, all they do is travel. No, so, like, they must have lots of sex. That, that, that the UK didn't find the same trend. Yeah, because so it seems, like, not shocking to me to hear, like, the other places. Yeah. Seeing this Germany, trend. I'm like, yeah, you don't got a sexual bone in your body, my friend. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Unless you're, like, in Berlin or whatever. But, wow, I'm just, like, going through countries dragging, and dragging yeah, yeah. them. I think you're I should like, stop. <laughs> yeah, you should stop. <laughs> but They're all beautiful. You'll yeah, have sexuality everyone, and sexual bones sexual. in your body. <laughs> and good job, Britain. Anyways, it's just, like, their, like, meta-analysis. I was like, I do want to know what's going on with Britain. Because the theories are that increased porn use, people are... Mm. People are getting their sexual, sexual getting off. Like they're elsewhere. literally getting off elsewhere, and in fact, maybe even having a harder time being attracted to mm. people in real life, like overstimulation. I That's mean, one theory. And even thinking about social media and like the desire or like what's put in front of us always to have perfect, beautiful, sexy bodies. Yeah, that's actually interesting. I a didn't mix of think probably of self like insecurity and loathing, and then also having the high expectations of what is sexy to us not matching up to other people. <laughs> yeah. Like my the TikTok, there's like a guy, <laughs> there's just like this guy that like, <laughs> it comes on my TikTok all the time. All he does is like jump up in slow motion and his ass <laughs> jiggles like so much. It's like, I want to go. What's the song? It's like, they're like, so bad. it's like, eh, is it the Nicki Minaj song? Like, and every time you love it, it's got slow the motion. W and I got the F R E. Okay, and whenever it goes F R E, he jumps and he has the biggest ass. And it's now like an I'm like, that's a normal ass. Like, if I see if I right, see a normal like, ass, I'm like, your where's ass? your ass? <laughs> but it's like insane because it just he must release he must jump in slow motion four times a day and then. It gets Have enough engagement. And now he's doing that dumb thing where it's like, he's in a Spider-Man costume. Why is there in a Spider-Man costume? I guess it's just like spandexy, like it, like it fits the body. Why is that? Why am I watching that? Greg, you, <laughs> I don't know. I have never seen this. Um, no, you have. I thought it was I've a never, universal I've trait. never seen this man jumping. <laughs> you haven't? <laughs> no. Shit, I can't believe I've said this out loud. But I've definitely Damn seen it. like men who are using their bodies 
to like get attention. Yeah. Like in a way that's like, yeah. you know, the dick outline or, or big butts, but I, I don't yeah. know this one in particular. But I mean, that's when I'm like, that would affect your ability to be like, I truly well, overstimulation <laughs> yeah. too. Right. Like, cause we know that like porn <laughs> addiction can affect your sex outcomes even. Right. Yeah. In terms of like your ability to be turned on. If you, uh, like are consuming a lot of porn. What does that do once you're in the bedroom with somebody? But also there was another trend on TikTok recently. And I think it was like, you know, Gen Z being like, I, we love dad bod. And then it would like show images of like clearly men who work out so much, but just don't have six pack abs. Like I saw someone breaking this down. Oh. He stitched a video. Cause it's like this idea of like, yeah, oh, we like dad bod. And then, the picture one of the people had used of dad bod was literally Jason Momoa. They had, the head was cropped what? up, but it was like, he was in a slight bulk. So he didn't have like ripped. What's a slight bulk? You know, when you're like a fit person who's not in a deficit, you're in a oh, bulk. Oh, oh. So like, he was like oh, in a phase probably where he was like yeah. not ripped abs, but was probably in between like putting on some muscle. And the idea that that's a dad bod is like, the irony of the internet. yeah it's also funny because it's like not trying to also blame no and gen they're also z gen z because they're just like that's a that's a 40 yeah. year old because they're used to they actual, did, it, like, the image like wasn't clear that it was jason momoa until the stitch found the original picture and was like that's literally that's jason like, momoa you're saying has dad bod one of the like sexiest like men yeah ever, exactly whatever. and the fact that the this video was laughing being like these people are spending <laughs> every day working out and this is what you then think is dad wow. bod. Like, no that's perception true of it is when i picture dad bod i'm like they're jacked yeah, you're but just like, it's slightly, they just, they just don't have like ripped abs. They <laughs> eat a lot of food and work out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which dads don't do because they're busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also, um, some scientists think this decrease in, I mean, what's happening is that they're observing a like stark decline in self reported sexual activity and then trying to figure out what it is. Like, it's not like they know for sure. Oh, but yeah, another thing was just truly social media taking people's attention not even sexually just like away from day to day yeah. like taking up the, your time yeah taking up your time taking your ability to go on a date or even you know set up an ability to have sex or yeah. if you're in a long-term relationship people like are just on their own and not and to having be sex honest, yeah like <laughs> you like, know okay. what you know what makes you horny being bored, bored. yeah and it's like you know what actually makes you do anything being bored like yeah. it is crazy and i know we yeah. talk about phones and they're poison all the time they're and poison. i'm absolutely addicted and i every week i have to be like this week i'm putting my phone away and then and you I never do well sorry yeah. I never, I okay, never do. Drag me. No, but like no, but it's I'm, true. Like, was in the universal it universe. might last for a little while but yeah it's just i mean it sucks exponentially because it's like part of our jobs but i feel like everyone nowadays feels like it's part of their responsibility to be like posting their lives online um but I do feel like yeah, I'm only even, ever horny if I'm bored. Yeah. And even if you're like wanting to sync up your horniness with your partner back in the day, you wouldn't have a phone. Of course you would bang. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you would be like, maybe you'd put on a black and white boring TV show where someone's <laughs> like, hey there, folks. And then they'd be like, oh, have fun. And then they'd be yeah. like, let's have sex. Because. There's nothing else to do. And now there's so much else to do. Uh huh. The, okay. So I can bring up my study because it kind yeah. of ties in a little bit in a way that I hadn't realized. But so I, in particular, was looking at a study that's talking about women's libido. Libido. Sorry. Libido. Libido. Yeah. Libido. Libido. Um, because, you know, the preface is low sex desire affects more than 50% of women and it's difficult to treat. It's also difficult to diagnose, obviously, like what is low, low sex, sex drive. drive. Obviously, okay. this is self-reported and how people talk about themselves out in the world in their own desire when they're feeling horny. Um, but this study in particular was looking at relationship quality and how that ties to sexual desire. So it wasn't just hmm. like necessarily about when a woman is horny or not. Yeah. Um, so what they found is that women who rated their relationships as equal reported greater relationship satisfaction and higher sexual desire, equal. which sounds obvious, but it's literally that women typically carry a higher mental load in, in a relationship. Like they typically are expected to and do do more housework. Ain't They're, that the truth? Yeah. And they are typically expected and do do more childcare on average. And there's lots of responsibilities like, you know, this article, 
was giving some vague responsibilities of like women often are better at like remembering birthdays like in your prototypical like <laughs> heteronormative relationship it's like the woman's job quote unquote Good job. you know what i mean but to like take care of like the things that are those little things that matter i love i was just like men don't care but yeah I can continue. and so ultimately when that workload and in particular the mental load is more even in a relationship more sex. women are more horny Gotcha. Their sexual desire goes up. So it's and they, truly they have less on their mind. Yeah. Um, interestingly, the study wow. looked at queer couples as well. Same, same sex female couples. Uh, I bet it's similar. And they found it to be the same thing. So it was, in general, the study was able to say lesbian relationships are inherently more equitable in the beginning. They are, they are better at sharing responsibilities, but, then but the pattern still held. So like okay. in a relationship where one person felt that they were taking on, it was not as equal, sexual desire was lower. Wow. Do you know what I mean? That's so, so interesting. So even though the pattern is stronger for hetero couples, yeah. in, a, in a lesbian couple in this case that did feel unequal, sexual desire was low. I thought that was really interesting. Well, and it, it relates. It related to the mental load yeah. aspect of it, which... Obviously, social media is not the same as like your responsibilities, but if your brain is being exhausted and preoccupied by just constant stimulation, it kind of like ties in that you would be exhausted and have no sexual desire. And it's like, you got to schedule sex. <laughs> okay. I oh, feel like in general, point, like, yeah. <laughs> like long-term relationships, you have to schedule sex and there you go. It's like scheduling it is an example of that. It's like time. Like it's just like, there's so much time is being tanked up in so many different mm-hmm. ways that like at a certain point you it is scheduled and it is like go back to that boredom thing it's like how do we as a society i'm never help bored. ourselves yeah to to get to a place where we can have more than a moment's boredom without looking at our phone it's so hard well actually the only time i'm bored is when i'm on my phone bored i've like but that's scrolled. a different kind of bored yeah no that's horrible that's not even bored because like, it's not true boredom that's, what is that that's it, death it Sometimes I go, I'm going to put my phone away. And truly three minutes later, I go get it. Because I'm like, "Ah, what am I going to do? Just sit here? And you know me of all people, I love to sit and stare. Yeah, no, I know. You actually But if it's like in my field of vision or I know where my phone is, it's so hard. I will close Instagram actively and open it in the next second Mm -hmm. like a goddamn like ra- like <laughs> lab rat like yeah. i'm like i'm done with instagram because this has been pathetic you've looked at like every story and then i'll shut it and then my like thumb will Refresh. go bop, 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 and yeah. it'll be back up and i'll be like and it won't even reload because it's like there's nothing like zuckerberg's like there's nothing new here mm-hmm. which is crazy because so what do you TikTok think like where do you think this new. goes what do you think we do regulate regulate them but, but, but is the answer to regulate like the amount of social media use or phone use like i think that's that's weird to like tell people how much they yeah. can and can't do. I think for kids, it's different when parents want to impose like limits. Well, the the Silicon Valley companies are struggling for the first time ever. That's a oh. little Schadenfreude. Like Facebook is like you don't get meals and shit like that. And like even Google, <laughs> we were just at a Google event and it was like for the first time that people it's there like were hiring. We're freeze. like okay, there's a hiring freeze. We're not hiring. We're not buying New York like we mm-hmm. used to. So there's there's something happening. Like it might just be because like a Chinese company is now taken over and we're just in America yeah. watching them struggle, but it doesn't mean that the, that the internet isn't still proliferating. But I think that sex decreasing like is such a sign potentially of the times. And that maybe is a sign of some sort of breaking point. Like maybe there really will be. But my fear is for those companies, they double down and they're like, we need higher user engagement. How do we get them more addicted? Well, I'm just like, that are is we, right, where like regulation but, needs to come in because is this yeah. not cigarettes? Is this not like it's something like that is addictive and actually not good for us? Maybe there's an art. Like, I think it's hard because of course, like connecting socially and having entertainment yeah is great and allowed, but it's like, where do we step in? Like but, there was never any regulation around like TV consumption. Obviously there's regulation around like uh, helping to support TV production that is like educational or is yeah. like good and supports Canadian content in our country's case. But there's something interesting though about like looking at these studies and seeing the decrease in sexual activity amongst people aged 18 to 24, particularly men. But then thinking of that's in 2018. Yeah. So that's Gen Z. Like thinking about how 
I feel like there's this like euphoria, the show <laughs> type like narrative that maybe just happens for all generations where it's like the kids are crazy. Mm -hmm. Like the kids are out of control. And then really the studies are like, well, they're having less sex mm -hmm. than the generations above than the millennials. And yeah. they're having less sex than boomers right. at that age that it's kind of like, oh, that goes against like kind of the popular culture. Well, yeah. But then I'm like, unhinged. but then I'm just like, that's, almost more sexual activity is like when it's safe, a good thing. Like that's what these studies are always trying to mm -hmm. say, which I think is kind of funny. They're like sexual health and satisfaction are key to life satisfaction right. and happiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They may lower heart rate. <laughs> they do the thing like release stress, like could make you live longer. Like yeah. these, these are I like, mean, it makes sense. It is like a, such a, well, an animal act, but a human act and like closeness, physical closeness, intimate closeness with other people. Obviously, you know, but that can bring like satisfaction. But that's like scientists talking about sexual activity in studies that are about to say sexual activity is decreasing. In general, there's a lot of risk and warning about people having that's sex, true. especially yeah. young people. It's always like, oh God, like yeah. be safe. It's like, yeah. But now there are scientists who are actively like, uh, people are having less sex, and then all of a sudden their abstract is like, and sex is good. So it's like, okay, if we are thinking yeah. of it as What's sex is good, then young people are having less sex, and to me that is not what like I thought parents were concerned about with Gen Z. Like mm. I thought it was sort of this like they're jeweling in the middle of the street and banging <laughs> willy nilly like cause I watch euphoria, right. which is a bad show. Sorry to the lovers of euphoria, but I'm like, it's season one was great. Season one was great, but season two, I was like, anyways, I don't need to go there. Cause I know that's going to like polarize people, but <laughs> it's a little like everyone wants sort of what they can't have is what I felt like these studies were telling me. It's like, now we're so worried that young people right. having We've less sex. We've always been telling kids don't have sex. E well, I don't At know, the like least be so Christian, yeah, and like, be scared of yeah. STIs and be scared of teen yeah. pregnancy and be scared of. So like, now all of a sudden, well, obviously, safe sex. It's like, um, it's just sort of interesting to think like, is this going to become a big enough issue because of phones, because of whatever the reasoning is, which we will never be able to like say directly. Mm -hmm. Are people going to start being like encouraging? safe sex in order to like bring you know better mental health or yeah. better like it just it will be interesting to see if that shift happens as we keep well that going. was what was coming out in japan is that they're encouraging like younger people to drink more and like supporting like alcohol companies through messaging campaigns so there'd be more kids that's actually to have kids yeah though. yeah that's but i different. mean ultimately the goal that's probably is to crazy. like loosen up and like i mean it's not obviously healthy necessarily to do it through alcohol yeah and also but i like, think they're just uh, of course that's like related to kids i don't know japan maybe combined. open yourselves to immigration Hello, sorry. <laughs> and it's like they need immigration. Yeah, but I, I talking about the sex aspect of it, it is like, yeah, I guess it's mixed messaging. I yeah. think like yeah, yeah. or or just there's a trend in the science community about this being an issue. Then I'm like, okay, we need to re rephrase how sex is educate educated to kids. But maybe it actually has changed. Like I'm not on the cutting edge of education. Mm -hmm. I would hope if I was a sex ed teacher. Oh, that'd be so fun. And I would love to well, be a gym teacher. I'll just say though, there's a <laughs> difference between like, we're not encouraging necessarily like high school kids to have sex more. Like these yeah, studies are talking about 18 24. to 24. Like, and, and it's not True. like, there's no shame in not having sex also. But in the yeah. grand scheme of things, if it's like we're seeing this pattern of less and less, we know for like a mid 20 year old, that can be a very healthy part. Yeah. Of course, of course, it can also be very unhealthy. Some people are sex addicted. Some people yeah. use it for their forms of validation. So it's like, it is a double-edged sword, yeah. but we know in general, if you're in like a confident person in a healthy relationship, sex can bring and add to that health. Ooh, I wish that there were actually studies on queer people. Cause like, <laughs> it'd be so yeah, interesting know. to know like, like my instinct men. as like a millennial gay man is like that. It's more it's like obviously gay men are not yeah. having this issue, and but that's because, a stereotype. Yeah. That is a stereotype based on my it, life. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. It would be interesting to see how different it is, but obviously that's also tied into acceptance more. But also maybe people. grinder and grinder. And like yeah, apps, that's true. Like that's why I thought that like Tinder more, yeah. and like these apps would have like, like I'm facilitated it more by these results because I would have thought my assumption without reading all this data was like, of course, there's more sex because it's right. just like a simple text away mm -hmm. with a stranger. Whereas before, but it turns out that what it, there's or the theories are is that maybe you actually go out and have more sex because you're actually talking to people. Mm. You're maybe 
your standards are insanely high because you're like, I want to bang an influencer. And or you probably, like, it is like you get you get turned on by people's personalities in person. You yeah. know what I mean? Like sometimes sex is spontaneous in that way. Like, yes, lots of people go and hook up in person, but there's nothing better than hooking up with someone when you've actually connected with them. It's you so know I mean? like, like, and meaning. then the anticipation of it versus just like yeah. showing up at someone's house to be like, we're here to have sex. I've never met you to meet someone in a bar and yeah, have sexual tension so and like, you know, they're funny. You find them attractive. You get their personality. You get to flirt a little, you get to touch a little. And like that building of tension Ooh. is like so different than many, especially gay people's experience of like sex. Online. It's so wild to like, think about first impressions and like sex and then like like just thinking of like all the boomers at their little like martini bars and just like <laughs> that's all they had it's all like they I had. Bet it was i bet and it, life was simple then they didn't know what you don't know what you got till it's gone yeah. but they it's so interesting to look back on them and be like they had no idea this like internet age was coming and i wonder if they were all just like had amazing tactics to just like pick up at the bar hmm because they were like, that's all they that's had. That's all they had. Think about. Like, it was just like, you know what I mean? I'm curious how many people would Well, I mean, there's a whole generation bar. of pickup lines. Like, that doesn't really exist anymore, yeah. right? Like, there was all these, like, lines that, like, anyone could use to try. Like, sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's cringy. But it's like, we don't really talk about pickup lines anymore. What is a... Okay, we're going to end. But I want people to reach out on Instagram or Twitter with pickup lines. Because, like, when I am out and, like, meet, like, new guys, I am, like... Holy shit! What do you say? Like if <laughs> you're pickup line to me is so cheesy, but you're right. There's probably no, but ones it, that there's feel probably really good ones. Like it's probably feel real. asking them. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean? I'm like, what would you say? And like you want help us? We need pickup lines. Yeah, yeah. Like what do you do? Like no, <laughs> we need to have more sex. Well, but uh, no, I think it could help everyone. Let's just let's just like let's like just start a resource. reach out, and we're gonna, we're gonna just put, and then we're gonna have a yeah. ASAP Lines event where you're all gonna hook up because you're all gonna use your pickup lines yeah, on and each other. We'll put them on our Instagram story and like just be like, these are pickup lines you can use. <laughs> and I wonder, like, it would be really fun. It would be really fun to have an obvious pickup line used on you in this day and age. Only I if think. it's self-aware. It goes back to that thing of being self-aware. Yeah. Unless it's such a discreet and clever pickup line. If the person sees it as a pickup line, I think it's immediately coaching. come here often. Like it's not <laughs> bad. So no, but it's not even that bad. It's like, do you like like picturing like at Woody's? Like, do you come here often? You'd actually be like, that's so in the, like, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I'm excited to see people's like what, answers. Come here often? No, I think come that. It, how are you? I'm too. I'm cringing already just thinking about pickup lines. No. D- I think it has to either be where did you get your shirt? Well, it's different, <laughs> and I think it's different for heterosexual couples, and and depending on the context, because sometimes yeah. a pickup line can be sexual in nature, and, and sometimes it can just be friendly. And, and but like, men are but scary. if you're into it, then sexual in yeah. nature could be like exciting. No, but I it think, could also be yeah, really, scary. really dark. Okay, yeah. let's picture gay bar. Cause it's a little easier. Cause I don't know anything like, cause like you, I don't, I think the joke ones are cringy when you're like, what? well, you know how people like, obviously no one says this now, but like, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? But like those kind of like, <laughs> that jokes, would be like, amazing. <laughs> I actually, wait, like that's the best one so far. You've all never I, heard all that. I could think of was where did you get your shirt? <laughs> did it hurt when you fell from heaven? And then they say heaven? what? And you say when you fell from heaven. That's, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's the best one I've heard so far. Uh, what I would are actual other ones? But like, then it would be awkward after they'd have a normal, like, and then they just start talking normal. You, yeah. you, they'd need to keep talking in like a vaudeville in like yeah. 50s, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to end this. Um, send us your pickup lines. Yeah, we need pickup Tweet lines. Them. Maybe we'll and put we'll, it on an Instagram story yeah, to get some. We have, and to have more safe sex. Okay. Peace. Alrighty, bye.